Hello, friends, and welcome to another video. Today, I'm going to be running a viral croissant bakery. That's right, I said croissant. Now, I like croissant. And at this point, who doesn't? The quintessentially French crescent-shaped pastry is not only super delicious and iconically flaky and buttery, but also in recent years has become something of an internet darling. Stop! I could have dropped my croissant! Are you going to finish that croissant? Croissant. Croissant. From anime to Jimmy Neutron to Vine to TikTok, the people love croissant. And even though I have always loved the taste of croissants, that huge pack of croissants from Costco just hits different, I am surprised by how much stick the product has in the public imagination. As not only is it a highly memed food, it's also the basis of tons of super popular viral foods, like the giant croissant, the croissant donut or cronut, the croissant waffle or croffle, the croissant bomboloni or crombaloni, and the croissant cookie or crookie. And not only do people wait in line for hours to try these delectable creations, but there's also a ton of content out there of people kneading, rolling, garnishing, baking, decorating, slicing, munching, and crunching these beautiful pastries. Maybe that's partially why these things are so popular. The croissant is notoriously difficult to make, but every step of the process is pretty satisfying to look at. And then after just one crunch, it's gone. And after falling down a cronut hole of croissant content, I thought, I gotta try and make some f***ing croissants. And in our quest to learn the craft behind oddly satisfying niche small businesses, running a croissant bakery seemed right up our alley. And in my search for a willing bakery, we stumbled upon Black Box Bakery, a pastry shop in Denver that specializes in unique, colorful, flavorful croissants that gain notoriety for their crazy filled croissant cubes. And against all odds, they agreed to let me take over their bakery for a day and both learn to make some croissant as well as make some custom croissant cubes of my own that if you guys go there in person, you'll be able to try out for yourself. No word yet on whether or not we're calling them crubes, but I'll do my best. All right, so let's go and make some croissant. But before we head off, I do want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Headspace. If you're like me and have an overactive brain with basically a scrolling for you page inside of it, filled with your Google calendar, to-do list, email inbox, and the occasional flash of croissant, you might benefit from some Headspace. Now, if you haven't heard of it before, Headspace provides a huge library of different content from guided meditations to other self-care practices to help you decrease stress, increase mindfulness, and take care of your mental health. Now, I have historically not been that good at meditating, so I was a little unsure at first if Headspace would work for me, but Headspace has such a variety of different programs to choose from that even with just a few minutes a day, I can do breathing exercises to feel more grounded or a quick five-minute meditation to refocus and feel more productive. And my favorite, and honestly the thing that I use the most on Headspace, is their huge catalog of sleep casts. As you guys can tell, I watch a lot of content, and while I can spend hours doom scrolling in bed, it's not the best way to fall asleep. And Headspace's sleep casts are a great way to occupy my wandering brain instead of having my phone in my hand. Tyler and I love the Beachcomber and Evening Tide casts, and you can even hear YouTube ASMR legend GB narrating Whispering Pines. So if you think some Headspace could be helpful in your life, we've partnered with them to offer viewers of this channel a 60-day free trial of the app, so you can try it out completely for free. All you have to do is sign up with my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen somewhere on screen. And who knows, a common crunchy croissant sleep cast could be next. So with that, thanks again to Headspace, and now on to the croissant. Now, the first step in our croissant quest was to get to Denver. Interestingly, Denver seems to be some kind of croissant hotspot, which I did not know before doing research for this video. I haven't spent a lot of time there historically. As some of you guys may remember, we got to spend about 30 minutes at Denver's Union Station on our train trip across the country. But where the croissants are, I go. So there we went. All right, so we're here at the Edgewater Public Market in Denver, Colorado, outside of Black Box Bakery, and we're about to go in there and make some frickin' croissants, people. People. And when we arrived, Black Box's founder and master baker Ariel was waiting for us, ready to slap me in an apron and whip me into shape. All right, so yeah. uniform first. And right off the bat, I was feeling super professional in my assigned chef jacket and corresponding apron. Look, I, I was bored to be chef. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get you a towel too. Oh, a towel. One thing you can't do is give me a prop or costume because I will fall into character right away. You look food competition show ready right now. All right. Really, you do. Let's go. 
Where is the lamb sauce? But even if my appearance said otherwise, I was still a complete pastry noob. So we had to start at the very beginning, with our plan being to first make a traditional butter croissant from scratch so I could learn some of the fundamentals, then make one of Black Box's signature viral croissant cubes, and after that, once I had a little more knowledge, make a custom crube of my own. And step one of our croissant making journey was mise en place, or measuring out all of our ingredients. It's kind of perfect height for you, because I can't reach that. Oh. <laughs> oh, so this is what I'm here for. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which, to make croissant dough, meant we had to measure out a fair amount of milk, then some bread flour on wheels. Too, too bread, too furious? Bread, <laughs> bread drift? <laughs> Which gives your baked goods a little more structure and chewiness compared to all-purpose flour. A lot of all-purpose flour does go in there too, though. Yeast, sugar, salt. It's a way of life down here. <laughs> you mean up here? Up, up, up here. <laughs> a mile high in the air. And a fair amount of butter. And unlike with some other dough recipes, croissant dough overall needs to be cold for most of its construction, so these things are gonna be going in and out of the walk-in slash freezer. I do like these, uh, flaps. It feels like a like a 70s bedroom. Now, Black Box Bakery is actually a space-themed bakery because not only are the pastries out of this world good, their goal is to push the boundaries of baked goods and experiment with new and unique takes on the classic pastries we all know and love. We took it in a way that space is infinite. I mean, there's a lot of things to be discovered. We kind of feel like we can do that with pastry where we just want to go on an adventure and see what we can get. They are also apparently very into aliens and conspiracy theories. Theories. All right. Uh, <laughs> Conspiracy yeah. bakery. Yeah, so that's just like fun for us. <laughs> People in Denver are very serious about their conspiracies, I've heard. Conspiracies and croissants. Where's the uh, the Denver airport box? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and airport conspiracies. Don't forget those. I mean, <laughs> the horse is haunted? <laughs> he killed his, his creator, yes. Okay, okay, there you go. Yeah, so that's not a conspiracy. It's actually happened. That's true. Um, it, that's true, okay. Yeah. And even though Black Box Bakery is by all accounts a funky bakery, Arielle and her team are all highly trained pastry chefs, which makes sense. In order to push the boundaries of croissants, you have to be good at making croissants. And all this combined has led them to such creations as the sweet potato maple starship, croissant ice cream cones, the eggnog cruffin, the cheese it croissant, and the mishmish. No word yet on what that is exactly, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Basic croissants first, trip to pastry 51 later. So with all of our ingredients measured out and our butter cubed to satisfaction, or rather, henge to satisfaction. Butter henge? Butter henge. It kind of fits into the conspiracy bakery. Yeah, they're like conspiracies about stuff. What is the meaning of Stonehenge? It was finally time to mix all of our ingredients together in this giant industrial mixer. Hello. Just open and dump? Okay. Control let's, dumping. Control dumping, yes. <laughs> a control dump, let's see how we do. And she is a pretty impressive beast, devouring all of our ingredients somewhere down there is milk. Yeah. And then whacking them into dough. Oh, all right, yeah. Look at that corkscrew go. And as this mound of dough is forming in front of me, she do be mixing. Look at it. It looks fluffy and bouncy. I think we were starting to face the looming question of how do we turn this blob into a delicate pastry? May I? Yeah. Oh! That's pretty stretchy. Now, croissant dough is a yeasted dough like bread, so the dough itself isn't actually super special. Oh my God. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna take some force. Oh my God. You can even saw at it a little bit. Okay, yeah, sawing is working. Yeah. For example, if you just baked one of these lumps, it would not be a croissant, it would just become bread. It turns out the key element of the croissant is that you laminate the dough, which simplified means folding butter into the dough multiple times to create very thin layers of butter and dough. And when you put laminated dough in the oven, Oven, the butter will melt and create steam, lifting the layers apart and leaving you with dozens of flaky, airy, buttery layers of croissant. And if you're a seasoned pastry chef like Ariel, you're hoping for a nice, even honeycomb structure like this. So to start our lengthy process of croissanting, I had to make sure that each hunk of our dough was shaped into a nice orb by kind of folding it under itself. So you don't have like random pieces going everywhere? Fair enough. So what you're gonna do is basically just pull it towards yourself. Mm. And apparently my interpretation of Ariel's instructions here included a hip thrust for some reason. <laughs> but, <laughs> what was that? It was just a hump, huh? <laughs> Sorry. I was, I was just trying to get into it. <laughs> and though after watching other people do this step, I do think some of what I was doing was correct. I was just using a little too much pelvis. So what? you're gonna... <laughs> Why, why are you looking at me? What? There was just a little more donut daddy in my technique than I had hoped. But once we had some nice, even little dough dudes. Looks beautiful. Hey, well, that's pretty good. 
bongos. It was time to start flattening them into sheets. This one looks like a face. A little alien. Oh! They're everywhere. This video's gonna get taken down. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you watch an at-home croissant making tutorial, this is usually where the rolling pin will come out. But one of the advantages of hanging out with a professional pastry chef is that she has some serious pastry making equipment. This is the laminator, mm. aka sheeter. Love it. And your job is the laminator. I'm the laminator. It's like a Denzel Washington movie. <laughs> the laminator. The laminator. <laughs> this, my friends, is an electric dough sheeter, and it's gonna flatten out our dough in no time. I feel like this is a very powerful position. You know what I mean? I'll hit you with a little of this, a little bit of that, some of that checkout aisle action. <laughs> so after throwing a little bit of flour on our humped lumps, how was that? Even better. A little better? Yeah. Does the speed help? <laughs> <laughs> we put our dough on the sheeter and started flattening. On your walk. Gets it. Go. Oh. And I kind of think of the sheeter as like a reverse rolling pin, as it has its own pin that lowers down and a conveyor belt that moves underneath it. A little to the left. Which speeds the dough from one side of the sheeter to the other. A little to the right. Flattening it in the process. And once we had some relatively flat sheets of dough. Oh, fits. If it fits, he sits. Let's go. Onwards. Onwards. They needed to rest and cool for a stint in the fridge. After which, oh, yeah. He's squishy. We were ready to whip out some slabs of butter and start laminating. It slabs. iPad kids be like. <laughs> <laughs> now to laminate this dough, we started by flattening it out even more. Skinny legend, this dough. And then also flattening out our iPads of butter to match the thickness of the dough. And once that was done, we slapped our butter in the middle of the dough and wrapped the dough around it like a Pop-Tart. So we basically just want the dough to meet, not mm. overlap, right? Right. And once we had this dough butter dough sandwich, we put it back onto the sheeter and started flattening again. Whoa. It's getting pretty long. It's gonna get longer. Until it turned into basically a long flat scarf. Then in order to build those trademark croissant layers, we folded our scarf back onto itself once and then twice, which quadrupled our layers of dough butter and dough. Oh. You're folding it over like a sheet. Exactly. Then flipping and flattening our sheet in the other direction. There she goes, there she goes again. And then folding it back onto itself again, this time to triple our already multiplied layers. Layers on layers on layers. They exist. Layers on yeah. layers on layers. Yeah. And this relatively manageable stack of layers is called a book, which once it was created, had to rest in the fridge for a while before it was ready to be used. I'm trying to get under it. I'm good. I'm in. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> but its future was not unwritten, for it was about to become a whole bunch of croissants. Good night, sweet prince. <laughs> Now, after our book was fully rested and ready to emerge from the fridge, we then flattened it once more on the sheeter to make sure all of our layers were as thin as possible. And when it was scarf-like once again, we rolled our book turned scroll onto this rod. Whoa, that's awesome. Yeah. And then unfurled it onto our table like a beautiful, tasty roll of toilet paper. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, photo finish. Now this is where things get a little slicey. As Ariel pulled out an array of pastry torture devices, including what looked like a tandem pizza cutter. Want to play a game? <laughs> POV, you are a pastry and this is saw. <laughs> to slice our dough into strips and then whipped out an X-Acto knife and a ruler to cut those strips into triangles. And you do want to be pretty quick about this so all that butter in your layers doesn't start to melt. Boom goes the dynamite, let's go. Let's go, boys! I'm just screaming at pastry. Things are going well. They like it, I can see. <laughs> and once we had all of our triangles, we had to stretch those out into long dough tails. This thumb is the stretcher. Okay. And I'm just gonna let it go. Like that? Nice. Okay. Because it was finally time to roll our dough into that iconic crescent croissant shape. Look at that. Kelp forest vibes. Now our idea here was to fold our croissant dough once and then twice to create the little feet on either side of the crescent and then do a little flick to get the roll really started. Then Ariel picks up the pastry and rolls the rest with her fingers. And close. Nice. Oh my God, look at him. That's beautiful. Hey. And as pastry apprentice, I had to try my hand at rolling at least a few myself. Stretch, fold. Yeah. Second fold. Yeah. And then, and then little. Now in my defense, this is not supposed to be super easy. Oh my God. She ain't pretty, but she is in a roll. So bad. 
Yeah, not, not bad at all. You've seen worse. I've seen way worse, yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I like to hear. And though I was officially not the worst at this, there were a couple of things that tripped me up. I'll go that way. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. We'll meet like here. <laughs> Besides it just being hard to keep your stretching and your spiraling totally even as you go. Okay, that's not good but I'm gonna keep trying. After a long day of dough making, I was also kind of warm, and my warm fingers were actually causing some of that butter in the top layers of our croissants to melt. I think I got hot hands. Yeah, everything's a little melty. Leaving my croissants kind of shiny and fingerprinted, which is not ideal. You know what they say about hot hands, right? What, what did they say? Bad croissants? Bad, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, your first one was great. <laughs> but Ariel did give at least a few of my croissants a passing grade. Shape looks good. Thanks, Chef. You're welcome. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. So that's something. I guess we'll see how these turn out. They don't stick out so much nah. that from afar you could tell. It's more of a Monet situation. So into the freezer they go to rest overnight. Okay, so now that we've all been schooled, including me, on what classic croissants are and how to make them, it's time to expand our horizons a little bit and take on the cube. Now, I think part of the reason why cube croissants became so viral is because not only are they eye-catching, they also provide a lot of room to fill the croissant up with different delicious innards, which look incredibly satisfying when you split them open. It's like a present. And the cubes also provide a lot more surface area to do cool decorations on whichever side you decide is the top. And so for our first foray into cubing, Arielle decided that she would show me how to make one of Black Box's signature mulled wine and chocolate crubes, which sounded pretty damn good. The next one? Next one. Here it comes. Another. Another! Now to start off, the process of making the croissant dough is the same, with the wrapping of the butter inside the dough and then flattening it and folding it time and time again. You don't need me to explain laminating again, I'm sure you've had enough of that by now, but I think since these croissants aren't crescents, making sure they have the flaky buttery layers of the laminated dough is the key to them still being croissants. Some haters might say they still aren't, but hey, there are always people afraid of true innovation. Am I right? More. Give me, give me more. More? More. More. But once we had flattened out our book to Ariel's satisfaction, and stop. There he is. Rather than now cutting it into strips to roll into crescents, we rather had to roll the dough all together. Just like that? Yep. To create like a long rolled dough stick. Okay, Yay. how do we feel about that? I feel good. Great. Log vibes intensify. Log vibes. And then we measured out and cut our log into even little Tootsie Rolls, which will fit inside the square molds that Black Box uses and expand to become crubes. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and that is all you have to do to prep the crubes before baking. There's just a good feeling to it, you know? Like I'm just getting through something. Because the mulled wine part will come with the fillings and the decorations. All in all, it is still a complex process with the laminating of the dough, but this part is a lot easier than the traditional butter croissant, and a lot better for someone with hot hands like me. I'm mildly obsessed with the side. <laughs> <laughs> so now for cube number two, the custom crube. Now, Ariel and the Black Box team have made a lot of different cubes before, from birthday cubes to fruity pebble cubes to a full collection of Halloween cubes. So when thinking of making a custom cube together, we wanted to go for something that they hadn't necessarily done before, that wasn't full on Halloween, but was still a little soft X Black Box branded. So like goth light. And I saw on their Instagram that they have experimented with a black striped croissant before, which seemed to me like a perfect sprinkling of dark aesthetic. Kind of like a little bit menacing, a little bit elegant. So we decided to go for a black and white striped cube croissant. And once again, the dough lamination process was mostly the same, with one major exception, because in order to make our black stripe, we had to bake it into our dough. Hey, how you doing? This is my dough hook. It's very pinched, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Kinky Captain Hook vibes. <laughs> <laughs> so we combined some dough scraps with some black food coloring in order to make a little bit of goth dough we could use. This is, this is the vibe. Yeah. This is the vibe I was looking for. Though in order to get the dough fully saturated, oh my God. Oh wow. oh wow. It's crazy in there. We had to let Kinky Captain Hook have his way with it for a while. It looks like an apostrophe. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a comma. But the results were worth the wait. And after a stint in the fridge, boom, take a look at this. It was back to the sheeter to stretch our goth dough out enough so it would cover our book of laminated dough. A boom. And after basting our book with flour. It's like one of those uh, Turkish uh, massages. Yeah, it's a hamam. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Ty, I am the burly Turkish man. This is my victim. 
Me. <laughs> you, in the future. It was time to send our good book through the sheeter to once again flatten, spool, unfurl, and then logify our custom dough. So this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> the vision is Beetlejuice croissant. Supernatural, underworld vibe. Love it. Zoot suit. <laughs> now, after slicing, the stripes on the sides did look very nice. Boom. Damn. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That looks like a Swiss roll. The black dough did try and give us a little trouble by smudging near the top of our rolls, no matter what cutting method we tried. A little sprinkle, sprinkle. A little sprinkle, sprinkle. And chop. But a baker after my own heart, Ariel wasn't gonna let the smudges slide without a fight. Shall I try and peel? Yeah. And ever so gently push the black dough layer back up to make sure all of our pinstripe spirals were nice and visible. Like, does that look okay? Yeah, yeah. solid. Cool. Just a little surgery. And once we had finessed every roll to our satisfaction, I mean, it's hand massaged croissant. Let me tell you. We packed up our goth cubes on a tray and put them into the freezer to cool overnight. Now, obviously we can't add the decorations to our cubes until after they're baked, but another key feature of the croissant cube is that they are pumped full of fillings. And Arielle and her team make all of their fillings in-house. So I guess as pastry apprentice, I had to make some too. And for our mulled wine cube, they do kind of like a holiday milieu of flavors with a mulled wine ganache and an orange diplomat cream. Now, diplomat cream is actually actually a combination of pastry cream, which is a thickened custard, and whipped cream, making it kind of the perfect midpoint texture of light and yet still structured. I promise I won't lick it. No. <laughs> Although it is dangerously close to my mouth. <laughs> which did sound amazing, but Ariel did also make me whisk the whipped cream by hand. Sucks to do. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have a machine for this one, I guess. Does it look right? Uh, it'll be there soon. I think I'm getting hazed. And we topped this all off with some cinnamon and some orange oil to make ourselves a nice winter Wintery, citrusy diplomat. And then as for our mulled wine ganache, flavor from the land of my people, Denmark. Mm -hmm. Ariel gets pretty molecular with it. Whoa. Yeah. This Whoa. is biological, baby. And uses some straight up glucose in her recipe. Oh my, oh my. Oh, I love yeah. it. It looks like glass. What the heck? Which literally looked exactly like clear slime and kind of felt like it too. Then all we needed was some heavy cream, dark chocolate, and of course our spiced and mulled wine, which we stirred together for some perfect festive goodness. We did film this in January and it is now April, but you know, Christmas can really be any time of year if you just believe. And then as for what was gonna go in our custom cubes, I personally love all flavors fresh, tea-like and herbaceous, like mint, lavender, rose, and well, tea, and Ariel makes a mean Earl Grey whipped ganache, which she suggested we pair with an elderflower flavored honey to make sort of like a London fog latte in semi-solid cream form to the face inside of our sleek black striped croissant cube. Sounds like heaven to me. Our honey we were gonna deal with the next day, but as for our Earl Grey ganache, Ariel once again whipped out the glucose, as well as another crazy sugar, trimaline. Oh, what yeah. the heck? Way different. What the? What is this? Followed by some heavy cream, some nice Earl Grey tea bags. Oh, we're making a tea king here. Yes, like a rat king, but it's tea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> All right. And a generous helping of white chocolate chips. And to really make the flavors pop. Do we need salt? Yes. In here? Yes. You're doing so well. <laughs> <laughs> that was your final test. <laughs> See? I was finally becoming a useful pastry apprentice. That happened. There Love it. Go. Love yeah. it. Also, shout out to the stick blender that made an appearance to combine all of our ingredients together and really made me feel like I was back in a soap art tutorial. This is gonna taste good. I feel like there's been so many steps with these croissants, I forgot that they're gonna be delicious. <laughs> <laughs> We've been working. Steps, yeah. We've been working for it, baby. And that is Earl Grey ganache, baby, which needed to set overnight so it would be ready to mix with some whipped cream tomorrow. That's it for today, folks. Boom, goes the dynamite. So with our dough laminated, croissants rolled, and fillings prepared, it was time to call it a night. Excuse me, thank you. Because tomorrow was baking day. <laughs> what was that? That's very really LMFAO of you. <laughs> so the next morning we arrived at Black Box Bakery, ready to bake, deco, and then finally eat some croissants. And Ariel had taken all of the croissants we were gonna bake out of the freezer. So they were ready to go. Do you wanna guess? Who's is who's? Who's is who's? <laughs>
They look identical. <laughs> and taking a look at our croissants the next morning, some of mine did look kind of funky, but a few were flying under the radar. Ariel thinks this one has potential. Okay. And then also maybe this one. Dark Horse, maybe this one? So I had some hope. They all end up in the same place, son. Inside the stomach. Yeah. There is this whole intermittent phase. They have to be, they have to look good, but. <laughs> <laughs> but before we could put our croissants in the oven, we had to proof them by putting them in this kind of like humidifying cabinet. Oh yeah, it's warm. Warm and moist. It is warm and moist. And the idea with proofing is that you let the dough rest so the yeast inside can do a little fermentation action and release some gas to make the dough rise. Woo! That one's huge. <laughs> and after a little proofing, these guys did look bigger and jigglier. If you do side to side, you'll see. Like this? Oh! Yeah. And then we gave them one final farewell squish. They're kind of bubbly. That's good. Okay, okay. That's yeast okay. activity. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Before popping these bad boys in the oven. Let's go, boys. All right. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Now, as for our cubes, they're actually proofed inside of their square molds. I'm gonna take these chunkies, put them in these molds. I love it. Because we definitely want the dough to expand, but we don't want them to get bigger than the molds. Otherwise, if they get too big, they'll explode. Yeah. We don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want that. But once they were proofed to Ariel's satisfaction, they look a little bit bigger. I'm not gonna lie. They're yeasty. Full of yeast. Yeasty boys. We put our lids on all our square molds. It's a fort. A fortress. Yes. And then it was into the oven with them as well. Okay. All right, let's see how that goes. <laughs> I have faith. All right, <laughs> we're feeling good. Now, obviously our cubes are inside molds, so there wasn't much to see while they were in the oven, but here is our attempt at a satisfying butter croissant baking time-lapse. Please ignore us running around in the background trying to build a blockade to block out the reflection on the oven, but after a bit, they were looking nice and crispy and somewhat shapely. Like these look good. That looks okay. That one, that one. That, that was okay. This is interesting. That one went crazy. There were a couple of our croissants that we thought were really cute. This one's great. A fair amount of them were strange enough shaped that they were gonna either become ice cream cones or almond croissants where they get smushed and then covered in almonds. Just slather them in almonds and then you can't even tell, right? The only one that might be a true flop is this one in the corner. I mean, this one could be like a, like a Demogorgon one. You know, it could almost <laughs> that be- That one's a little rough. <laughs> yeah, like a Stranger Things collab, right? But we're not gonna talk about him. And once our cubes were ready, we popped them out of the oven as well, and then out of their molds. Ta-da! They smell so good. And although they didn't have the sharpest edges that Ariel likes to see, they were certainly cube-ish and buttery. It looks like an adorable sushi roll. Yeah, it does Actually, look like a sushi yeah, roll. Yeah, I, was... I was gonna say like the black on top like almost looks like seaweed. Yeah. So they were certainly good enough to go for our prototyping purposes. You see the layers? They look really nice. Yeah, the curly Q, the spiral is awesome. Yeah. And with everything out of the oven, our next step up was to decorate our croissants. For the butter croissants, that just meant a quick shower of simple syrup. We kind of squeeze it so it does like a aggressive shower. Which I thought was gonna be more gentle. Whoa! Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so like a lot. Yes. But ended up being more of a monsoon of simple syrup. Nice. Nice? Okay, <laughs> that's it. And then we had to decorate and fill our two cubes, which was a little more of a complex process. Enter Jordan, decorating master extraordinaire, who is gonna be teaching me her ways. I like to do five holes, mm. so one in the center. And in order to fill our mulled wine cube, we had to decide which side we thought was the bottom and then poke a series of holes in the skin. Make Get a little there. crevice, basically. <laughs> then, yeah. yeah, and then you do the same thing in all four corners. Oh, so kind of like a, the face of like a die. Yeah. Okay. Then you basically take your fillings and pipe your little heart out. Oh. You can kind of see it like start to come out. Yeah, I can. Whoa. And you want to make sure you get in a fair amount to really give people their money's worth. Yeah. Oh, I do like, feel some it's weight. Hefty. Oh. Yeah. So that's how you know it's like really I have some. packed in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. I have some. You're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's nice. <laughs> and after that, we flipped the cube over so we could take on the top. Now, the tops of the cubes here do provide a lot of room for creative expression, and the goal with a viral croissant is to be eye catching. Ta da! Jordan helps ideate a lot of the designs for the cubes at Black Box, and she seems to lean into the abstract and kind of lets the frosting speak to her, so to speak. No ah. pressure. I had a score at the beginning. Just bonus caramel. Yeah, that's perfect. And for the mold wine cube, Jordan's idea was kind of geometric and warm toned, heroing a slice of candied orange. Just a little sprinkle, sprinkle. To represent elevated winter. And then that's it. Great. So these are looking very spicy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Very like simple, <laughs> spiced, <laughs> winter, you know. And with one design down, ta da! 
What do you think? It was time to see what Jordan had in store for our cube. But really quick, we did have to finish off our custom fillings, which entailed us mixing our Earl Grey ganache with some heavy whipping cream to make it lighter and fluffier. That's what I'm talking about, people. Cheers. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yum. <laughs> <laughs> and if you remember, we were also going to be mixing some elderflower syrup into some Colorado mountain honey, which was supposed to add a little green, floral, and cool flavor to the honey itself. It smells to me like lychee. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very yeah, similar. Yeah. And once we had all our fillings, it was time to fill up our cube as much as possible. All right, that should be good. Beautiful. Because we needed to get the cream to the mouth. Okay, perfect. I put, I put a lot in there by accident. And then it was time to flip her over and tackle the top. Oh yeah. And for this design, Jordan had ideated something abstract and kind of three-dimensional with some mountainous dollops of vanilla whipped cream scraped on the sides of the cube. And then same thing, just on the other side. Goth mountains? Question mark? <laughs> as well as some vanilla cream cups in the middle. So you're like melting the whipped cream in a shape. Yeah, cool. That she used to showcase some more of that sweet, sweet elderflower honey. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so a little bit kind of fills it up a lot and then pinch. Oh. Kind of teasing, highlighting, and then literally gilding the honey with some gold leaf. This is a nice croissant. Let me, let me tell you something. This is a luxury croissant, okay? <laughs> Which was very convenient for hiding any honey overflow. Yeah, just cover that one up. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> That one literally is a pool cover. Yeah. <laughs> literally just goodbye. Now, given that Jordan's design is supposed to be open to interpretation, you could say these three dollops look like buttons on a pinstripe suit or mountain hot tubs, but I think this design looks like eggs. What do you see? I oh, see, mountains. yeah, I see eggs. <laughs> I, see eggs. <laughs> I do like eggs. Do you yeah, like eggs? I do. Okay, that's why. I used to have why. a weird thing about eggs, but like it's grown on me. <laughs> okay, you have a thing with eggs. You have a relationship with eggs. Yeah. And at the very least, Jordan's subconscious seems to agree. But now it's turned positive. Yeah. Now you are bedazzling the eggs. <laughs> yeah, okay. exactly. I love exactly. it. Exactly. So semi-goth Lux honey bath on the slopes, or eggs. You guys tell me what you see. But with our cubes now filled and decorated, we could say farewell to Jordan. And I think now, after two days of high altitude pastry boot camp, it was finally time to dig in and eat some croissant. And we started off our taste test at the very beginning with the classic butter croissant. Ooh, nice. Ooh, let's see, let's see. Now, after bifurcating it to reveal the insides, there were some good layers up in there. It didn't have quite the perfect honeycomb structure that Ariel strives for, but especially around the edges, it was pretty good. There's some good near the exterior. The inside yes. is a hole. But delicious hole. But, but a delicious hole. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. What a delicious hole. And Ariel was right. Cheers. Cheers. The taste was great. Yummy. Mmm. We can't knock a pasta. Crispy, crunchy on the outside and very buttery on the inside in terms of flavor and mouthfeel. The hole may be sunken, but it is moist. Like, mm. that's a pretty buttery croissant. So all that laminating was worth it. The sugar on top is a nice touch. It, it's kind of terrifying. A speedy shower of simple syrup, but it does taste good. Just a kiss, you know? I don't know if that was a kiss. <laughs> Full blown make out. It was more like a blast. <laughs> Seven minutes of heaven. Yes. <laughs> now, moving on to our mulled wine cube. Oh. Oh. Eating these cubes is certainly a daunting task. Whoa. Beautiful. But apparently a good way to approach it is kind of folding it like it's a slice of New York pizza. Compress it. Compress, Compress then bite. Compress, yeah. Oh, f Okay. You yep. ready? Yes. Cheers. Cheers. And let me tell you, getting all that stuff in your mouth is worth it. Mmm. I might be in Flavor Town right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm a customs. I'm approaching the border. <laughs> it was certainly a blast of festive cream to the face. The diplomat was nice and citrusy and also substantive, but still fluffy. And the ganache was nice and flowy, but not too boozy. The mulled wine kind of brought out the fruitiness of the chocolate instead. What do you think, chef? I like. We like. And it blasted Tyler back to Flavortown as well. Oh my god, is it in your mustard? It's a tidal wave. <laughs> Holiday cheer. And then, of course, we had to taste our brainchild, the custom-striped gilded egg croissant. Move that croissant. <laughs> oh, oh my god! god. Wait, that, go. that is so full. Now, our original vision for this cube was that it would be like a goth light, almost Beetlejuice croissant. Cheers. Cheers. But I think we sort of strayed away from that a little bit. Holy sh <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. And ended up less Beetlejuice and more Beetlejuicy. What are the characteristics of this croissant? Well, it's a little bit goth, <laughs> but it's fucking 
gooey, okay? <laughs> it is overflowing with cream. <laughs> but that is not a negative, because despite being like a wall of cream, the flavors in our croissant were not that cloying or overwhelmingly sweet. I think the tea and the elderflower really balanced each other out and gave the croub an almost refreshing, light, mountainous flavor profile. It's like winter night in the mountains. I agree, it tastes fresh, like I'm outside and it's snowy outside. Yeah, it's okay. very, it's very cool. Cool, right? Very right? cool, I think the cream is cool. So if the brief was vaguely goth in the Denver mountains, I feel like this pastry actually ended up at a pretty good collab creation midpoint. Sophia X Black Box in cube form. And I think if we really stretched it, we could sneak the space theme in there too. We're pushing the boundaries here, okay? Maybe We're like in space. <laughs> you're on a winter vacation, but on a different planet. Oh. I like it. Yeah. Kind of like Wallace and Gromit skiing on the moon vibes. But if you go in person and taste it, let us know what you think. So after all that, it turns out everyone was right. Making croissants is pretty hard, but some croissants were made over the course of this video. She made them. <laughs> There's so many ways you can mess up, and yeah. she didn't. Mostly didn't mess up. I feel like that's pretty high praise. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I truly ran this bakery. It's more like the bakery ran me, but I certainly leveled up my knowledge from zero to some. So a big thank you to Black Box Bakery for teaching me some of the ropes. But I think if I want out of this world croissants anytime soon, I may have to return to the croissant capital of the world, Denver. Are you happy to be in Denver? We. <laughs> <Oui. laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked that video, make sure to smash that like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to smash that subscribe button. Here are our short form slash social media handles. And if you are in Denver or have any urge to come to Denver, check out Blackbox. And with that, I will see you guys a next time.